This morning, a couple came to get my advice on whether or not they should get married. You know, in one quarter of all marriages, couples report that smartphones interfere with their relationship. And this is one of the issues the couple brought up when they came to see me. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Margaret Robinson and Musa McCaleb. The two of you have been together for about two years. Yes. We're here to do one of my favorite things, which is a before your vows. People used to come into this court, and I think, didn't anybody talk to you before you got married? And so now I have an opportunity to talk to people before they get married so we can see if you can stay married. You have given me a compatibility test, which I have read. You have given me some information about your issues. You've also given me your marriage license, which you've given me permission to tear up, should I think is a bad idea, or give it to you with my blessing. So before we get to any of that, I'm going to start with you, Ms. Robinson. Why don't you tell me why you want to marry him, but you have concerns as to whether or not you should? I think I'm stopping myself from getting a ring. I think I'm the reason I don't have a ring. Um, but That's interesting. Why do you think you're the reason you're not getting a ring? Well, you know, why, why buy the cow when you get the milk for free? He, <laughs> he gets everything from me. I cook, I clean, I wash his clothes. It's, it's nothing that he wants that I don't provide already. So, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I've messed this up. Now, how can I take it back so I can get a ring and then yeah. do this, you know? And how do you stop? Yeah, he's well, like a spoiled well, child. Yeah, so I'm gonna back up here for a second. Yeah. Okay. You trying to get me to give... Well, get him to give you a I'm, ring. I'm at the point of ultimatum. Either I get a ring or... Well, it's time to make a ring. Were you clear about that when, when you came here? Mm, she's mentioned that. Uh-huh. But my More thing than is... One. My hang thing on, is, hang My on. thing is this. When I first met her and she asked me about marriage, I told her... My, 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 what I believe about marriage is that you're committed before you, you're married before you walk down the aisle. Mm -hmm. I've given my commitment to her. Mm -hmm. The thing with me is that I don't want to jump into something legally mm -hmm. and then have to go through the, the legalities of breaking, you know, of all of that when she doesn't really show me that she's understands me or feels me. Well, I don't okay. have commitment no, to no, Ms. Robinson, one reason he doesn't believe you understand or feel him listen. is because you do not allow him to finish his sentences. Oh, God. See what I'm saying? <laughs> You're you interrupting me. Hey, 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 hey. Yes, ma'am. You're interrupting me. Right. I got a robe and a man with a gun sitting over here. <laughs> right. And you still right. can't contain yourself. Right. So I know when you're at home with him, my man doesn't get to finish a whole lot of sentences. Oh, so you, you, go, you go, you go, hey, right oh, here, yeah. right here. <laughs> That's Mr. McCaleb, tell me what makes you believe she doesn't really get you? Well, just with what you had to correct on, that doesn't come out until she, it festers. Mm -hmm. If I'm asking her what's going on, she can walk around the house all day, two to three days, and not say a word. It's me always coming to her saying, what's going on, baby? What's wrong? Then the simplest thing will blow up. For instance, uh, when we first got together, she was cooking. And I asked her, hey, you know, I noticed that she was using metal on metal. You know, I have cook cookware, so she's using forks to stir up mashed potatoes, which okay. would scrape the, the stainless steel and cause it to rust, and then I have to throw it away. So I just, I went I to her. I didn't know that. Uh, Go ahead. Well, I mean. <laughs> I mean, oh, I'm not saying it isn't true. Right. I, I'm just saying I can't cook. Go well, ahead. I mean, I just, right, okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I normally use a wooden spoon, you know, I, to, I get to prevent it from scratching up. I, I humbled myself. I thought about it because we're just in a relationship. I said, well, baby, do you think it'll be better for you to go ahead and use, because I use the wooden spoon mm -hmm. instead of a fork to, you know, to scrape the metal. She just out to the back room. You gonna tell me how to cook? And I'm Why like... Why not, baby? Thank you for Ms. cooking Robinson, for me. Ms. Robinson. And that's what she does. She thinks that I'm being unappreciative. Yeah. When, when you're I, just trying to help out. Exactly. Now, Ms. Robinson, let me ask you this, and I want you to just contain yourself for a second. Why was that so upsetting to you that because he asked you to use a walk, spoon? He, he walked in the house from work, and I'm fixing you a hot meal so right. you can sit down and eat. You've been at work all day. And instead of, oh, well, I appreciate the meal, it's don't use a fork on a pan. But, Your Honor, I didn't spoon. say it like that. What? I did not say like it like that. Like I said before, That's I humbled I myself. It. 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's how she heard it. That's how because I heard she has it. an attitude. Let me attitude. ask you this, Ms. Robinson. Is it just with him that you hear all of this no. anger, or do you have, and be honest, Open your mind wide like a prairie. Okay. Think about all the relationships that you have with other people, the conversations that you have with the public at large. What happens with your family <laughs> you members? Dead on do you indeed catch a tune? No, I do not. Because I, I have certain situations that I have to know how to manage myself accordingly, but I feel like I can let loose on him. He's my rock. I'm supposed to be able to but let loose on him and my give thing, it to him. That's okay. my thing with her. You know, I, I figured, figured nice. hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I figured I can let loose on <laughs> right. him because yeah, that's right. my rock. He's that's my that, shoulder. That is marriage mistake number 175B2. Thank and you. I'll explain <laughs> it to you in a minute. Uh, I think it's disrespectful when you're booty watching so hard that I have to <laughs> turn around and see what you're looking at. I don't do it to the fact of disrespect. I make glance and then I then keep put straight. Put yourself together. You're right, 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 right. It's and I kiss it back. Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as getting a divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Now, Ms. Robinson, I've been messing with you for a minute. I want to give you an opportunity to explain to me your concerns about Mr. McCaleb, specifically with respect to your concerns that he may be in fact cheating or at least flirting or doing inappropriate things with other women. He loves attention as if I don't give him any. If he's getting attention from women, a, a woman, a woman on the street, walking down the street, he loves it. It's, he soaks it in. It's like the like Superman when he gets his powers or something. I don't know. But yeah, he <laughs> loves <laughs> attention. Well, give me a couple of examples Please. where he's gotten attention that you think was inappropriate or disrespectful. To you. Um, well, I think it's disrespectful when you're booty watching so hard that I have to <laughs> turn around and see what you're looking at. You know, you, you're watching that hard where it catches my attention and I have to turn around and look. I'm like, okay, it's nice, but yeah. turn your attention back Are to you me. Are you breaking your neck every time no, a woman with no, a good behind goes by? No, ma'am, no, ma'am. No, ma I mean, I yes. admit, so, sometimes, sometimes if it's just like a reflex, but I don't do it to the point of this. <laughs> to the point of disrespectful, yeah. you know, to be uh -huh. disrespectful to my woman because I have a fine woman. So I don't do it to the fact of disrespect. I make glance and then I then keep straight. Then put yourself together. You right, 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 right. It's a and I kiss it's that. Yeah, Your Honor, if this is a glance. No, 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 no. She then exaggerated. That's what he does. She exaggerated. Well, you Cause say she's jealous he sleeps anyway. with his phone under, under his, his pillow. pillow. No, no. Explain his conduct with. With his Thank e life. It's you. not every night. It's only right. the nights that I sleep on his side of the bed. We both have our own, you know, claimed sides. Right. And his side has Can the I... nightstand, mm -hmm. mine doesn't. So if I just so happen to fall asleep on the side with the nightstand, his phone magically disappears. And we wake up the next morning, it's under his pillow. Or it's under him. He sleep he literally sleep on top of it. Are okay. you afraid? I mean, if, 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 if I were to take your phone from you no. right now, no. did the code, hand it to her, That's the thing, would Yana. you break out in a sweat? That's the thing, Your Honor. He wouldn't she has because my he's code. learned to she has my code. because I found messages she, in his she phone has my already. Code. She has my code. I have her code. The thing about the phone and sleeping in the bed, she sleeps, she falls asleep before me. It takes me a while to wind down. I may flick through the channels, I may browse on, mm. I may pay bills online. And like she says, I'm against the wall and I may not want to go over her to That's plug my phone up or heard. get out the bed. Mm -hmm. So I just sleep and the phone is right in the bed. He won't so reach over to me to put his a, phone back on the stand, but he'll turn afraid, me over and tap me on my shoulder when he wants to wake me up for something else. If, what she's, afraid, he if she's afraid yeah. that I'm cheating or go, she has my cold, if the phone is going off, it's right there. If I'm afraid of her looking through my phone... Why would you leave it right there? Right, and it's in the bed with us. Ms. Robinson, what is the worst message or picture you've seen seen on his Thank phone. You. He he addressed the lady as high witness. <laughs> this is that? the thing, Yana, 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 Yana. No. This is a this this it's is no this is a, this is a, a woman that when I was like 13, 12 years old, yeah. hadn't heard from her. 
we used to go to the skate ring. She, back then, she had a curl. When we used to dance, they used to always get on Jerry curl. a Jerry yeah, curl. And it was you. short Jerry curl. And you know always, the Jerry curl, right? And that was that was the thing. Witness. Now I, I didn't I didn't try to I didn't that, try to argue with sexual. her when she found that because the innuendo is sexual. Yes. So I didn't try and it was, you know, it just the communication probably just was a no no. Right. So right. I didn't try to argue and I explained that to her and but that's the worst thing she's seen. And, and the girl and the young lady, she is, just she texted me, and it didn't happen like that. The young lady texted me on Father's Day. We had been arguing. It does not matter. I would, well, it does okay. not matter. No, 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 Ms. Robinson, Ms. Robinson, I'll tell you not whether it matters, and I'm going to tell you later whether it matters. Okay. But uh, what you say that sometimes he doesn't come home till 2 a.m. This you, is his excuse for that. He works <laughs> later than me, so it's okay for him to go out when he gets off work and not come home but until 2 in the morning. But how often do I go out? Mr. Captain McCaleb. Because if I get off work at 5 and I go somewhere, I'm at home by 9 or 10. So he figures... Do you figures, work full-time? I work full-time, yes. I forgot to mention that. And, and I come home and work full-time after that. Your Honor, this happened one time. Uh, one time. I can count three. Okay. Two or three times. Oh. But this... This, <laughs> this, 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 this is the thing. We've been together. We've been together two years. It'll be two years in September, Your Honor. It'll be two years in September. The incident, the, the last time that it happened, I was at, it was on a Saturday. I guess off at 6.30. Yeah. I, I get it. Two or three times in three years. That speaks volumes. You don't even have to explain it. Don't get him all, you know, you got to do it this way and you got to do it on this day. If the man's going to help, let him help. Don't be foolish. We're all <laughs> trying to get him to help. <laughs>
she's driven. Um, I mean, that's amongst a lot of other things. I mean, she's loyal. You know, she's loyal. Hey, that's an A. You got an A on that one. <laughs> Most guys come out here get D, D plus, but you got you, you got you got an A on that. One. You, you really, really did. Now, Miss Robinson, tell he them says, there's an A in Jared's. I'm trying to help you, Miss Robinson. <laughs> I really am. I want you. I want you to land this, brother, but you're not helping me out at all. <laughs> Just not at all. So, Miss Robinson, you give me 90 seconds of your care, love, and desire for Mr. McCaleb. Um, he is. He's strong. He's supportive. When, when he needs to be, 90% of the time. We're working on that. Um, he, <laughs> he's a protector, he, he really is. He's a provider. Um, he, he shows love to, I mean, just everybody around. And he, he has, he, he wants to talk. You don't find many men that actually want to talk. Sometimes he wants to talk too much and that's some of our problem, but he actually <laughs> wants to communicate. He's, he's very passionate. Um, he, he has goals and ambition and, you know, he, he has things he wants to do and I want to push him there and make sure he gets everything he wants done. I really oh. want to be there for him. Very good, Ms. Robinson. You, 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 you got to see. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'll explain it to you why a little later. Okay. There's always a whole lot going on in divorce court that people want to talk about. If you have something you want to say, join us on Twitter at Divorce Court or jump on our Facebook page and see what everybody's talking about on there. Sometimes you people get heated. Don't miss it. Mr. McCaleb, if I could clone you and pass you out, I'd make billions. Really? Like you. Good man. She wants to get married. And I know why you don't want to get married. I'll say one thing to you about that. It'll never be perfect. She's always gonna have flaws just like you will always have flaws. Once you live with a woman for a considerable period of time and keep dangling that maybe I'll marry you someday when you get right, it's unkind. Because fertility, time, all of that, it's not fair. So you need to make, be man enough to make a decision about what it is you want and then tell her about it. But don't keep taking all that she has on a promise that you may never fulfill, because it's not fair. Ms. Robinson, you cannot, you need to get out your own way. You got too much to say about too little. You get too excited about things that are too small. He is who he is. He's going to present the way that he presents. Mostly, everything he's presenting is good to you. So all those little things, nicky knack things that bother you, let them slide right past you. I do 97,000 things that annoy my husband, but he loves me and he looks past them. He does 10 million things that annoy me, <laughs> but I look past them. You guys got about eight things that ain't right and you don't want to look past them. So what you need to do is allow the man to be the helper that he wants to be. You need to keep your mouth closed when he's doing the right thing, but he's not doing it exactly the way he wants to. You need to allow the man who wants to talk to you to speak with you without you telling him what it is he needs to say, how he needs to say it, when he needs to say it. And if I were you, and this is just me, I'd break camp. You love this thing, you gonna have to work for it. I ain't coming back till I got a ring. I don't believe in that shacking up business. That's just you to me, if you were my daughter, I'd, I'd have a U-Haul at your house when we left here. I am not gonna give you your uh, marriage certificate because I don't think you two, you wanna get married and you, I'll get the number to U-Haul. This <laughs> bad is adjourned. <laughs> the story of Margaret and Musa has brought up something that is near and dear to my heart. Number one, fellas, don't dangle if you don't mean it. Don't say maybe, maybe, maybe when you know you really don't want it. And ladies, don't give everything if the guy isn't giving you the one thing you really want. <laughs>